I think we all take for granted that every time you turn the faucet on, water's going to come out. But one day, it's not going to work like that. Well, hi guys, welcome back to Simple Life with Chris and Tara. We wanted to do a video series on emergency preparedness, and we thought we would just start with the most important item first, water. All right, so these are what's known as well dippers. So if you were out of water for a long time and it looked like the electricity was not coming back on, you run out of gener gas for your generator to run your well pump, now you're going to end up pulling your well pump up out of your well and you, you'd be able to drop one of these down in it. So this is a kind of an antique one I got from my dad, which you would tie your rope to this end, drop this down into the well. This would, this would, this would open and fill with water. And once you got it full and you pull it back up, that's closed. And then this would hold this much water. Now I made one that was a little bigger. Now this would be pretty heavy to pull up, but I used PVC, but you can make this any size you want. Cause I'm going to make another one that's smaller, but you would just get a piece of PVC that makes sure it'll fit down in your well casing. You're going to glue a cap on the bottom and a cap on the top, but you need to drill a hole in the top first and buy a, one of these eyelets so you can tie your rope to and then drill a hole in the top and then you have something here. I have uh, like a big rock in the bottom. So you would drop this down and when the, when it gets in the water, once the water fills up to this point, then you would pull this up and it would be full of water. But like I said, this one's going to be pretty heavy. I'm going to make a smaller version. It wouldn't be quite so heavy. I'm even going to make a kind of a miniature one that's maybe only about this size and this long. So it's not going to bring up a lot of water, but it'll be super light and that would be a, a fine amount of water if you were thirsty. So drink. water is essential for life. I think you all know a human can only survive for three days without water. So you're going to be wanting to drink water every day. Don't wait till the second day, see how long you can hold out. Don't. They always say it's better not to ration your water out and just have a little bit per day that you need to drink a good amount of water each day. So once you get dehydrated, it's starting to get too late. So you want to keep yourself hydrated, drink plenty of water. So there's several different um, ways as far as collecting your water. So let's, let's look at a few. So in the event that the electricity goes out, we're going to run our well pump off our generator for as long as we can. Not leave it running all the time, but just enough to fill up some buckets, fill up more water bottles, things like that. So we'll hook this up to the house and run the well pump for as long as we have gas. But what do you do when you run out of gas? So here are just a couple food grade storage containers to store water in. A lot of people have coolers sitting around. So the, these are things that you would want to if fill up. You didn't have already have them full and you knew something was happening. You would have fill up buckets, er, everything that you could. Um, but these would be good to store water in. You could put a little bit of bleach in there if you were storing it for long term. If you had something that wasn't necessarily food grade, maybe you just had, maybe you just had a bucket. Maybe you just had some buckets and you wanted to fill them with water. You could still use that water for bathing or um, washing your clothes, washing your dishes, or if it was summertime, you could use them to uh, use it to water your garden. You could set something like this out, maybe if underneath your gutter. If you had your gutter to run in these to fill up. Just different ways to store water. Any, any, any kind of container will work, but just remember to have the clean food grade for drinking and the other is for other purposes. So 
So one of the way, main reasons that we moved to this location was because of this little spring-fed creek that runs down through the property here. Um, now, when you get into the dog days of summer in August, it gets pretty dry, but most of the rest of the months, it's flowing some water, and this would be some water that you could gather. You would need to boil it, run it through your bur Berkey or some other filtration device, but uh, at least this is another source once if maybe you couldn't get uh, any more out of your well or you run out of your bottled water, you always want to have a source of some sort of water that's not too far away. This is this is maybe a couple hundred feet from our house, so it's not too bad. So you also have the option of boiling water. Now you may not always have the luxury of doing it over a stove. You may have to do it over a campfire, but just remember um, that the boiling will kill the bacteria, however, it will not remove any contaminants from the water. Also remember guys, you have nearly 50 gallons of water in your hot water tank. And it should have a spout or a spigot on the bottom for you to get it out. Also, there's usually a couple gallons of water in your toilet tank. Now, in either of these cases, I would go ahead and boil those just to be on the safe side and just remember you need a good three to five minute rolling boil to kill all the bacteria. The CDC recommends one gallon of water per person in your house so per day. It doesn't take long for that to start adding up to a large amount of, of water so I mean they recommend you have at least three days supply but obviously we're we're thinking a lot more long term than that. So you're going to want to store some bottled water, but it doesn't take long before you start running out of spots to stack it. Another way you can store water for long-term storage is if you have cane jars like we do that are not in use, they're just sitting here empty, so go ahead and fill them up with water. The cane jars, if you happen to need them, you just dump out the water. You can use a jar still, but then you have water stored in your jars. That's just an easy way to collect water um, and have it stored for long-term storage for any kind of emergency that might come along. Okay, another area um, to think about when you are storing water is to think about filtration systems. A couple years ago, we bought uh, this filtration system, which is a Dalton, and then just this year, we went ahead and we purchased a Berkey as well. And then we also have uh, we went ahead and you want to make sure you buy like extra filters or even like the little fittings for the spout because sometimes um, you know they're not in stock and you won't be able to get them. And so you always want to make sure that you have an extra set of filters on hand. And here's two other items we did get for a uh, filtration system is just a Sawyer Mini. And then we also, um, a Life Straw is another good option to have as well. So when it comes to these items here, Um, you want to have more than just one. You need to have one at least for each person in your home. And then we haven't got these filters, uh, filtration systems set up yet. Probably go ahead and get this one set up and start using it as well. All right, guys. So the Berkey is going to be our primary source of filtration. But should something happen or break on this or maybe we finally run out of our filters, we do have a backup and we'll use this one if anything should happen to that one. So it's always good to have a backup. Another important thing to remember, um, if you have animals um, on your homestead, you wanna make sure that you are gonna have extra water for them. And if you have a garden, you wanna go ahead and make sure you do have extra water for your garden to water it. So just remember guys, water is the most important thing that you could store. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be for World War III. It could be there's a tornado, there could be a blizzard, you can't get out. Um, there could be a number of different reasons that you're gonna be stuck at home and you're gonna need water. So just remember there's times when that faucet's not necessarily gonna turn on. So you have to think of ways to store water and have water at all times. So that kind of wraps up the water segment. Uh, we're gonna do several of these. The next one might be on food. So 
We'll have things on way to keep your houses warm, ways to cook your food. Well, guys, thank you for watching. We hope that this video was helpful. And, you know, the time is now to go ahead and preparing your home for emergencies. You know, don't wait till, you know, the snowstorm is on top of you and you're, you're without. But we thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you are a subscriber, we'd love for you to go ahead and subscribe. And if you could, go ahead and leave a comment on some different ways and ideas that you have about storing water and filtering water. And all right, that'll do it for this time, guys. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun